Okay, day seven. Jonathan Fibonacci and the best verses in the Bible, or the most encouraging voices, or the uh, most uh, encouraging verses, scriptures, faith, Jesus, whatever word you want to use. Jonathan Fibonacci out here in beautiful Durango. You know, we finally got some snow. We got two inches. I saw today in the Durango Herald or someplace that uh, this region, and I'm making this video from Durango, Colorado. I know that's San Francisco, but I've said many a time in this uh, YouTube channel that my favorite places in the whole world, of course, I'll always be from Duncan, Oklahoma, but I love Sausalito, San Francisco, and then, of course, Durango, Durango, Colorado. And, you know, I, I decided, you know what, I kind of went raving out here. Not raging Cajun, even though I'm from Louisiana, but... You know, I, uh, I made the decision that I wanted to make this channel more about Jesus and more about uh, resurrection. And I don't know what you want to call it. You know, maybe, uh, uh, well, I think when you lose everything, kind of like I did, you know, I lost a business and went through a really, uh, well, I lost my family and I lost a business within 45 days. You know, a business I had built from nothing. I was making 200000 a year. Then my ex-wife kind of... She threw a custody dispute in that a, a custody dispute that's still going on, and you know, um, of course, when you go through a custody dispute and you lose your your business and your family, and you start bitching and complaining, and you start needing people. Well, eventually, your family. Well, if you're like me, maybe you have a good family. I grew up in kind of a foster family situation where, and then boom, went raven. That's the story. You know the story. So as this channel, as this uh, YouTube channel has grown. I thought, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk more about Jesus because as I'm seeing my channel grow, I'm like, you know, a lot of people are watching this channel and ultimately it's going to come down to not which city you live in. Are you cool? Or are you not cool? It's going to come down to ultimately, I believe the Bible teaches that we'll come down to where we meet Jesus and we'll have an end of life review and Google does near death experiences and Man, those are some. That's an interesting genre of uh, a video. Of course, I'm kind of a documentarian. Uh, I talk about all kinds of things. But this and you know, here's the bad news. Okay, we talk about promises. Of course, the Bible's full of promises and talks about you know some some old disciples in the old days were killed in cold blood. They were considered vagrants. They were friendless. They were homeless. I call it raven. These are the ravens. These are the people that are the most vulnerable. You're like, raging Cajun? Is he from Louis? Okay, Jonathan Fibonacci, day seven. So here you go. There's my intro. Boom. Follow this content. You know the drill. But ultimately, I want to move past the intros. I want to move past the um, the places I love. I mean, obviously, I could talk about skiing, and I could talk about business, and I could talk about all kinds of things. But ultimately, it's going to come down to you and Jesus, me and Jesus, and I believe that. Uh, in fact, the older I get, and especially at, you know, having gone homeless, and uh, you know, I'm 42 years old. Never did I believe that I'd make an, be making a YouTube video from a tent on Manna Mountain. Remember, I have two living parents, five brothers and sisters. You're like, what happened? Why can't you just go talk to your fr friends and family? Well, when you lose money, you often, well, men go homeless. Women go on Tinder. So there's kind of a new epidemic called homelessness, and it affects middle-aged men. I'm not middle-aged. I was 39 when I lost my business. And, and so it, it's interesting how life in the Bible, we keep going back to the Bible. And I want to make my channel about the Bible and about trusting God. And what does that really look like? Will you, uh, well, here you go. Tell a story of this gorgeous blanket. Uh, a homeless man knew that it was going cold, or Jesus knew that it was going cold. And uh, colder out here in Durango, where sometimes you can get down to zero degrees. And if you're from um, the four corners, you know that there, there is like, I'm from Oklahoma and there's a, there's an Oklahoma winter and then there's a Colorado winter. And a lot of times Colorado winters can be fatal. That's why most people who are homeless live in Los Angeles. It's the, uh, it's the, um, homeless capital of the world because, well, Los Angeles doesn't have, uh, winters. So that's why California is epidemic with homelessness and San Francisco, my beautiful San Francisco, of course, you know, then having gone homeless and 
uh, eaten at soup kitchens. I've seen firsthand the corruption uh, that uh, that is impacting the most vulnerable group of people, homeless people. Um, so I thought, you know, fuck it. You know, I'm going to count the days I'm homeless. Today is, I think, 270 something of days of homelessness. And what that has taught me and what it's taught me about friendships and the lack of friendships and, and what is, well, here you go. There's the journey. The world didn't deserve them, the ravens, making their way the best they could on the cruel edges of the world. And what this is saying in Hebrews, because I'm doing the top 25 verses that really impact me, is I'm talking about what does it mean to really trust God. Now for me, Jonathan Fibonacci, homelessness and foster, being a foster child, and um, that, that's kind of been a, a burden I have dealt with my whole life. In fact, looking back, one of the reasons why I got married so young is I wanted just a family because I didn't have one. Well, I've always had a family, and that's kind of its own discussion of growing up uh, without a family, and you're really homeless at 12 and 15, but you call it being a foster child, and boom, 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 and how we in America love our semantics. You know, when we don't know what to call something, we call it homelessness, when really, well, like for example, um, it's hard to believe this, but I have been about a hundred dollars from the line of poverty because one of the jobs that's thriving out here in Durango is selling cannabis. Well, I have to have a license to sell cannabis. And in the in the three hundred days I've gone homeless, I've never had an extra hundred dollars to buy a license. And why is it important? Well, well, think of homelessness in terms of your city, because there's Fibonacci's everywhere. Well, when people have to have licenses to get jobs. Now poverty becomes the, the amount that you would need to get a license. And I've, I, when I was in Los Angeles, well, let me say that differently. Jobs, it used to be you could get a job. Now you have to get a license to get a job. If, if you think about the power of licensure and how if our country would literally stop making um, industries that don't need licenses. You know, does your industry really need a license? Like, do you really need a license to cut hair? Do you really need a license to sell a plant? Do you really need a license to sell a mortgage? When really it's the bank's capital, you don't really have a fiduciary role. You're like, he's talking about licenses, guys, and we need to call our senators. Well, you need to call your senators. You need to call people in power to protest licensure if you want, if you want to have a low incidence of um, of homelessness in your country or in your city, in your county, and how a lot of solutions with homelessness are very simple. But when we go to the Bible, we'll realize that ultimately it's coming down to good and evil um, and how, well, we'll talk about that. And if you ever would like me to come speak to your organization or maybe your city council about homelessness and what I've learned, or maybe come talk to your church. I'm like, holy shit, man, the church was really designed to help buffet some of the corruption or perhaps all the corruption from these corrupt governments and how we need to start talking about corruption in our government and how, um, you know, well, when was the last time you heard a pastor talk about uh, Bitcoin currencies? Um, well, well, let me say it this way. Has the church ever led a so social civil rights movement? Ever. I mean, where was the church when Martin Luther King was writing his letters to Birmingham from a Birmingham jail? Well, if you read some of those letters from Martin Luther King, where he is um, sharing his dream, he's talking to the church. In fact, what's interesting with Martin Luther King from, from the letters in Birmingham, or the, the letters that he wrote from a Birmingham, Birmingham jail, is Martin Luther King was trying to address the apathy of the church more than he was trying to curtail a corrupt government. He was, he was against both, but he kept saying, church, let's get right. And that's what I'm trying to say in this channel too. Let's talk about Jesus, obviously tell some jokes, share my photography, but it's going to come down to a word and it's simply love. And I know that sounds cheesy, but ultimately people who go to hell are unloving people, cold, callous, selfish people. Where's your brother? Who's feeding your brother? You know, I talked about this earlier, you know, a homeless man who's living on disability gave me this blanket and gave me two blankets. He did it because he knew that these winters are harsh and he wanted me to stay warm. In the Bible, it says, if you say to your brother, keep warm and well-fed and do nothing for his physical needs, that the love of God is not in you. 
So that's that's today's scripture. Of course, actually, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians, and I want you to read it from the, uh, the Message Bible. And that's what I hope, ultimately, these words, or my words, point to, is to honor God and to go to the character of Jesus and ultimately talk about the way of love. And this is, this is the Apostle Paul, and he says, you know, if, if you're not loving, you're nothing. You know, I showed you Hebrews earlier. He was talking about some of the problems that are going to happen when the spirit of mammon overtakes cities and churches and governments. Well, lots of people are going to suffer. So we need a loving church. We need a loving community. We need loving manna. And ultimately, no matter what your denomination or dogma is, who are you keeping warm? It says love never gives up. So, so neither will Fibonacci. Remember Texas 2503? Holy shit. Fibonacci. Love cares more for others than for self. You know, a, a, a homeless man uh, has, uh, has given me blankets. You know, when you experience the love of God through ravens, man, you understand just how lost the world really is. Because, well, raging Cajun raven talk. So go love somebody today. And remember, Jesus ultimately put it as the royal law. Are we loving? And do we realize that our lack of love will keep us out of heaven? And for some people, they don't care, which I can't imagine. Because they're, they're claiming ignorance. When Jesus on his death said, uh, on his deathbed, Jesus says, forgive them. They do not know what they do. When people are nonchalant about hell, they do not understand a world or a realm where there is no God. There is no mercy. There is no compassion. Again, go read some of those near-death experiences or go watch them on YouTube. Here's the solution. Be loving. Go practice one of those and understand we're going to practice them imperfectly. You're like, well, Fibonacci, how do I feed my sheep? Well, go. Here, here's a solution. Go to the grocery store and buy your favorite cookies. You know where they come, like, you know, they have like, 400 in the same pack or you know whether you go to costco just go buy some oreos or go buy your favorite cookie and the next time you see a homeless person give that homeless person five dollars and four cookies and look them in the eye and tell them that that jesus loves them and if you can't love them tell them that jesus loves them while you're feeding them while you're feeding them get right church and let's go home Fibonacci's out. Thank you for taking this journey. It was day seven. You know the drill, Americana417 at gmail.com. Just like the coffee. Seriously, man. I mean, I got kicked out of the local manna soup kitchen because I have opinions about corruption. And boom, they kicked me out. So the ravens have been giving me blankets. Even bought me some bread. Remember, I have five brothers and sisters and two living parents. I used to have 300 friends on Facebook. Many of these people know that I'm homeless. And they say things like, well, they pivot. They go, oh, we're sorry you're having these problems. It's interesting, their use of language when they know that I'm really just, or a raven is just needing food to eat or blankets to keep, cold, keep warm. People say, go get a job. I'm like, well, I'll be happy to if I can get a license to get that job. We'll go cook or code. Well, both those professions in this world is becoming a cook or code world. And if there's anything you get out of this, whether you like Jesus or not, whether you believe in heaven or hell, we need to look at our economy. That there's, It's slowly becoming the elites or cook or code. And that leaves a lot of people out. And those are the next generation of ravens. You're like, Ragin, Cajun? Yes, I'm from Louisiana. But Brittany went with Spears and I went with Fibonacci. Jesus is out. Thank you for taking this journey with me, Americana417 at gmail.com. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to be loving. Help me to be loving. And forgive me of all my ungentle ways. Jesus is king. Thank you. Day seven, tomorrow's day eight. Remember, if you leave your comments, I want to know where you're at because I'd love to see how this channel's growing. And when I get international emails, it just makes me feel like a Sausalito Balahala. Thank you, Jesus, for taking this journey with me.